Hello everybody, in this video we're going to continue to find limits analytically. So we're looking at finding the limit as x approaches negative 1 of this expression right here. Well if we just first plug in negative 1 and square it, we're going to get 1 minus 1 which is 0. The denominator also results in 0, so that's going to give us our indeterminate 0 over 0. When you get 0 over 0, remember that's not a number or a does not exist, so we're not done. We need to do more work. So 0 over 0 means more work. All right, and so when we study this, we see that the numerator can be factored. And it's going to be convenient that it's going to be factored into a sum and difference of like terms. We're going to be able to factor it where one of the factors will be able to cancel with the denominator. Okay, notice that even though we're factoring, we keep the limit in front because we haven't substituted anything, anything in. All right, and we can clearly see now that we're going to be able to cancel our x plus 1s, resulting in a discontinuity. And at this point, it's probably going to be a point discontinuity. It's going to be a hole in the graph. All right, if you think about what you have left here, now I'm going to be able to plug in negative 1 for x. And what you're actually getting is the y-coordinate of the hole on the graph. So now that we're going to plug negative 1 in and subtract another 1, our answer is going to be negative 2. Okay, so we're done. Number 2. Notice that, first of all, in the denominator, you're going to get 0. So um, we need to go ahead and figure out what happens when we plug negative 3 into the numerator. Because if it's 0, we're going to probably have to factor the numerator to cancel. If we don't get 0 in the numerator, then we know we have a does not exist. We're done. We can move to the next problem. All right, let's just kind of mentally plug in negative 3. That's going to give us 9 minus 3 minus 6 and that's going to result in 0 over 0 and indeterminate. So we know that we're going to have to um, factor. And let the denominator help you, um, let the denominator help you uh, factor the numerator. Okay, I mean the, the ultimate objective here is to be able to cancel the x plus 3. So I'm just thinking that in the numerator, one of my factors is going to be x plus 3. So just kind of keep that on your radar. All right, factors in negative 6 uh, that multiply and add to positive 1 here. So that would be plus 3 and minus 2. And how convenient, because now these are going to cancel. So what that tells us is there's probably um, a hole, a point discontinuity on the graph at x equals negative 3. Okay, now we're going to be able to drop the limit statement. So plug in negative 3 and the result is negative 5. If you want to convince yourself, of course, you could graph each of these functions right here and uh, trace and plug in negative 3. You're going to see that you're going to get nothing for y, but plug in values that are close to uh, negative 1 on either side of it and values that are close to negative 3 on either side of it with the trace feature, and those values are going to be close to these limit answers. All right, so this is called the, the, the dividing out technique. All right, try a direct sub in from the very beginning. Notice you're going to get indeterminate. So that tells us we're going to want to factor the numerator. Keep the limit statement as you do your work. All right, so when we factor the numerator, likely we're going to want to end up with x minus 1 as one of the factors of the numerator. Um, this difference of two cubes isn't a, a very common thing that you see. Uh, but it is something that we kind of need to be aware of. Um, let me give you the formulas. It's been a long time. You've forgotten. No worries. Let's look at the formulas. We can factor a sum or difference of two cubes by this formula. 
Okay, whether you're factoring a sum or difference of two cubes, and you can write this or not. I mean, it might be helpful if you do put it on your paper. Okay, it always factors into a binomial times a trinomial. So notice I have enough room for two terms and enough room for three terms. So a binomial and a trinomial. The binomial is always filled with the cube root of both of these terms. So what do I cube to get a cubed? Well, that's a. What do I cube to get b cubed? Well, that's b. And the sign that belongs in the binomial always takes the sign of what you're trying to factor. Okay, so we can go ahead and build this binomial because it's going to be a plus b. Okay, we're actually going to be using this top formula because we have a difference in the problem, but I wanted to go ahead and do both of them at the same time. All right, now how do we fill the trinomial? Well, the trinomial, we need three terms, and what we do is we look at the binomial, okay, and we square the first term. We square the last term of the binomial, so we get b squared, because negative b times negative b will be positive b squared. And the middle term is um, going to be filled with the product of the two. So we're going to multiply those together and get a, b, but here in the trinomial we take the opposite sign. So we're going to add the product AB. That's how we would factor a, a difference of two cubes. All right, so let's look at this one right here. Um, to factor a sum of two cubes, we're going to fill the trinomial with the A squared, the B squared. We're still going to multiply these two, but now we're going to subtract the product AB. Just a little formula to help us factor sums or differences to two cubes. So let's see if we can apply that formula over here to the numerator as we factor this. Okay, well we know when we factor that we're going to get a binomial times a trinomial. Okay, what do you cube to get x cubed? x. What do you cube to get 1? 1. The binomial takes the same sign. Okay, and how convenient is that? Because you can see already we're going to be able to cancel these. Okay, the trinomial gets filled with x squared, the square of x, and the square of um, negative 1, which is plus 1. We multiply these two together, and we just get 1x, and we take the opposite sign, which is plus. Okay, so at this point, we're going to be able to cancel. So we're going to have a point discontinuity on this parabola at x equals 1. Okay, now we're ready to plug 1 in. So 1 squared, 1, 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. Again, you can always graph this in your calculator. Go to trace, plug in values close to 1 on either side of it, and your values are going to be close to 3. So that's the y value of the point discontinuity. This is the dividing out technique. Okay, that square root just goes over the x. All right, try a direct sub in. Square root of 9 is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. And then the denominator gives us 0 over 0. So we're going to have to do something here. Okay, I'm going to actually factor the denominator. This isn't a very common thing, but it's something you can do. It's not something that we're comfortable with or even that we've practiced, but um, in this case, I'm going to try and factor the denominator. And you might be thinking, well, you need an x squared minus 9 to factor. Well, yeah, if that was x squared minus 9, then you'd get x minus 3, x plus 3, but nothing would cancel with the square root. Okay, x minus 9 still does can uh, factor. Okay, what do you square to get x? Well, what you can square is the square root of x. So think about that. The square root of x times the square root of x results in x. So I can make one of these binomials plus 3 and 1 minus 3. You can check your factoring by multiplying, and you are going to get back to x minus 9. And the convenient thing here is now I'm going to be able to cancel the, x minus, the square root of x minus 3 factors. 
When you cancel those, remember that results in a one. You have to leave that as a place a placeholder up in the numerator, one. Whereas back up here in these previous examples, when I canceled, I had a one uh, in the denominator or a one in the numerator, it didn't matter. Okay, but now that I'm canceling something out of the numerator, I do want to leave that placeholder of one. Okay, let's see if we can plug in nine now without getting indeterminate. So in my numerator, I have one. Okay, plug 9 into the remaining factor. Square root of 9 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. So our answer for this limit is 1 6. There must be a point discontinuity occurring at the 0 of these common factors. Okay, for problem 5, we're going to work with piecewise functions. So our first piece is going to be a rational function. Okay, and we're going to be told that, that's a comma, we're going to be told that this function is not defined at 2, or negative 2. x cannot be negative 2. That makes sense because then we're going to be dividing by 0. Okay, and the other piece is actually just y equals 1. The y values are, are 1 whenever x is negative 2. So just kind of remember that what this means right here, since x is uh, equal to only the number negative 2, that this is actually a point on um, this graph. Negative 2, 1 is a point on the graph. Okay, so here's the limit piece of this. You're going to be given the piecewise function, then you're going to be asked, okay, well what's the limit as x approaches negative 2 of this piecewise function? Okay, well the limit asks us to find, um, the, or the question asks us to find the limit as x approaches negative 2. Well, think about what this, this whole statement means. We're approaching negative 2, we're not going to be at negative 2. So actually we just need to disregard this piece right here because this is when x is negative 2. And that doesn't interest us. We want to be able to approach negative 2, so actually we're going to be looking at this piece approaching negative 2. So, even though we have a piecewise function, if you study what you're asked to find, you need to look at the restrictions because we're actually only wanting to approach negative 2 without ever being negative 2. So again, like I said, this is out for us, this point. Okay, so for us, I'm going to kind of work over this way. I'm going to rewrite the problem because now I know what I need to do. I need to find the limit as x approaches negative 2 of only this piece right here. So if you plug negative 2 in, you're going to get indeterminate. So in that case, let's factor the numerator. We'll be able to cancel the common factors, which tells us that we have a point discontinuity on this line. We have a line. Uh, when this function's graphed, we'll have a line just because we have this linear function. Okay, now plug in the negative 2 minus another 2 results in negative 4. All right, and I do want to look at a graph of this. It is going to be kind of easy to graph. Okay, so if I looked at what the, the graph looks like, okay, if we graph the top piece, we know it's a linear function. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. I'm just making sure we still understand everything that's going on. Okay, when I graph the remaining factor, I'm graphing a linear function with a y-intercept of negative 2. But remember, it has a point discontinuity at negative 2. So go over to where x is negative 2, okay, and find the graph, and that's where you're going to have your hole. So if I were to add, be asked to completely graph this piecewise function, I've graphed the top piece. It has a point discontinuity. And when I graph the bottom piece, at negative 2, I'm going to have to plot the point negative 2, 1. Okay, so we can see that, that we do have a point discontinuity, but the limit still does exist as I approach 2 from the left and 2 from the right. And it is negative 4 because that's the coordinate of the hole on that linear function. Right, and for this last example right here, before we go to a different video, um, we are going to be working with another piecewise function as well. 
just for some additional practice. Okay, so as you might can imagine, this piece is going to be defined for all x's except for 10. So this is the equation I want to work with except for when x is 10. So down here, I need to decide what 10 is going to be, or what the y value is going to be, and we're going to let it be 20. Okay, now the limit question is the limit as x approaches 10 of this function. All right, well, we're not working with the bottom piece because that's when x is 10, and that's not this question. We're not asked what the functional value is okay, at 10. Okay, so this is the, the piece that we want to work with. All right, plug 10 in, you get, um, ooh, you know what? That should be 100. My apologies, so this should be 100. It'd be better if it wasn't because then, uh, then we wouldn't have indeterminate, but we're supposed to. Plug 10 in, you're gonna get indeterminate. That tells us we need to factor. Okay, notice that we're going to be able to cancel this common factor. The resulting equation is a linear function with a point discontinuity at x equals 10. Okay, but the limit is still going to 20. That's the y-coordinate of the point discontinuity. And notice how in this example as compared to the other one that this limit is actually this y-value right here. So let's look at a graph of that and compare it to the previous graph. All right, so we're going to graph, um, let me get more of quadrants one and two. We're going to graph um, the linear function with the y-intercept of 10. Okay, that's what we're graphing right here, the remaining factor. Now we're going to travel over to where we think x is 10. We're going to go up and take a point out. My graph's not going to match up as far as the scale is concerned, but hopefully you get the idea. Okay, so I graphed x plus 10, I pulled out the point at x equals 10, that's where the point discontinuity occurs. If I'm going to complete graphing this piecewise function, then, um, then I need to graph the ordered pair 10, 20. Well, here's 10, okay, and this is, uh, output is 20. Well, remember that the limit was 20, the functional value from this piece is also 20, so actually that point is actually going to fill that hole, so to speak. A little bit different from this one, but wanted to, to show that the limit in both cases do exist in both these problems. Uh, it doesn't matter if the point is um, filling up the hole or if it's in, in, at some other y location uh, lined up with the appropriate x. So, All right, so this was the dividing out technique. In the next video, we're going to look at the rationalizing technique and a strategy we can use if we have square roots.